This is the second video on this 1957 Bolin's Ridematic Garden Tractor. In the first one, I put the tires on it. And now I'm going right for the fuel tank to see what that's like. There's a bunch of black crusty stuff, and I can see there's fluid in there. I'll get a light and take a look. There's quite a bit of fuel in there. Maybe I should drain the tanks before I store the stuff. Looks like everything above the fluid has the black scale on it. Okay, the tank's got to come off for a cleaning. There goes a washer from some place. I saw where it went, so maybe I can find it. There's already one on this bolt, so I don't know where it came from. I'll have to look into that. That don't look good. I'm afraid to look under there. I think I'll ignore that for now. This fuel line is hard from age, and I'd make a mess trying to get it off the fitting, so I'm going to cut it. I have a drain pan on the ground, and I'm in the driveway in case that don't work. Cool, it's clogged. That's handy. It's about the same condition all the way around in there. I'm going to have to use the tumbler machine. This is going to be the tumbler machine. I've done this before using threaded rods to support the tank. But I wanted something better and this is what I came up with. I have this piece of particle board. On the back side I have these blocks mounted and they locate the board in the middle of the rim. I 
I'm gonna bolt it on there with these carriage bolts. If you rotate this back and forth to find the limit of travel and put it about the middle of that travel, you'll be close to being centered over the holes. I'm going to take out this shutoff valve. Remember it's locked up and you can't turn it, but you don't know if it's in the on position or in the off position. We do know it's clogged at the moment, but I'm going to take it out and put a pipe plug in there. This is the plastic gas cap that was on the tractor. It has a hole drilled in it for a vent. I found this metal cap. It fits and don't have any holes, so I'm going to use it. I like to put stuff in there that has a few corners on it. I'm going to put these old woodruff keys in here. And these old square nuts. Don't need the wing nuts. Looks like they got rounded corners. Well, it's going to leak anyways. There was a gasket in there. That cap does have a dent in the corner. With this one, I'm going to hold the tank on there with wire. I'll use these bars as an anchor point. The way this tank's shaped, I'm going to put it flat against there first. It looks a little loose on there. I'm going to pull these two wires together with this extra wire to tighten it up. I'm going to block up the rear end here. been over an hour and it's getting dark so I'm gonna stop for tonight I have it mounted in a different direction this time there's a 2x4 under the tank there and I cut a slot in it with a circular saw the flange of the tank fits into that slot so I can stand the tank on end I was a little over an hour with it mounted that way. 
I'm gonna change it again. This will be the last setup. I'll run it that way for a while. Looks like I had a catastrophic failure. One of the wires broke. It was pretty thin wire. It ran for about 45 minutes, so I'm going to call that good enough. I'll have to use better wire next time. The paint's getting removed on the top half of the tank here. I tried to get the cap to seal better, but the threaded part of the tank's dented up to where it won't seal. This is all rusty as expected. I'm going to rinse all that off and see what it looks like. I rinsed out the tank and it's a couple days later, so it's had some time to dry. It looks pretty good in there. That black crud that was in there wasn't all rust. Just some kind of crusty stuff that was formed by the fuel being in there. This shutoff valve is just clogged from all directions. So I'm going to use different size drill bits to clean out the holes. Most of this is dry, but there's a big glob of gooey tar stuff. Since the gooey tar stuff is caused by old fuel left in there, I'm thinking this carburetor cleaner might dissolve it. It's been a little over three hours. I'm going to check it out. The way that's made there, with the valve stem riveted over the handle, it can't take a lot of force. So you can't be holding on to that. If you turn the packing nut down, you have enough room to get this needle nose type vice grip in there. By using a wrench in the other hand, I have a pretty good grip on the two parts that are stuck together. You don't want to twist with a lot of force and expect it to go. It might come out, but it'll damage the threads. You have to keep working it back and forth. How much force is too much? If the vice grips slip or something breaks, that's too much. By then it's already damaged. 
So maybe you have to ruin a few to figure out what too much is. I'm going to add some PB Blaster in here. It might help while I'm working it back and forth. I'm putting the vice grip teeth back in the marks it made the first time. It's already got those dents there, so you should use those instead of making more. That's not moving with the amount of force I'm willing to put on it. So I'm going to let it soak overnight. I'm going to loosen this packing nut so the fluid can go in there easier. It looks nice and clean. I still can't turn it by hand. I'm going to put the vice grip teeth in the existing marks again. It's moving now. You always want to make sure the packing nut is not restricting your movement. There it is. It's all packed up with dirt and sediment. Got to get the drill bits. I have a small file here. I'm going to smooth out the marks I put on it with the vice grips and pliers. And now, like usual, I'm going to use a wire brush on the stuff. These parts are nice and clean on the outside, but the stem barely fits in the hole because of all the dried up sediment packed in there. I'm going to use the drill bits again. I have to make sure I don't hurt the threads or the valve seat that's in there.
The male threads on this part are a bit worn, but should still work. For the female threads, I'll use this bent pick. I start at the bottom and rotate the part, so the pick screws its way out and cleans the threads along the way. My pick don't fit down into the threads on this part, so that's as clean as I can get those. I'm going to spray some WD-40 in there and work it back and forth. I'd like to use a tap and die to clean these, but I don't have that size. It measures about a quarter inch diameter and 32 threads per inch. I checked and they do make quarter 32 taps and dies, so I'll have to order some and see if that works on these. I'm going to go a little bit at a time. You don't want to force it. I'll be done when I feel it bottom out and to verify it you shouldn't be able to blow through it when it's closed that looks good now when I close it, I can't blow through it. Here's some crud in the other end I didn't get yet. This is the part that screws up into the tank. Okay, everything looks good. One last thing to check. If the packing is still good, I'd be able to tighten this packing nut and feel a resistance when I turn the valve. And I'm not feeling any resistance, so that's not good yet. I feel some resistance when I tighten it, but when I turn it in and out, it frees up. You want to feel a consistent resistance when you turn it, no matter how far open it is. It's not getting any better, and there's not much thread travel left. Soaking in carburetor cleaner probably didn't help the old packing any. So I'm going to add some packing. If you don't have any official packing material, you can use thread sealing tape. I'll use about that much. I kind of loosely roll it up so it's not so wide. and then wrap it around the shaft under the nut. You want to push it into the nut there so it gets smashed by the end of the fitting.
and you shouldn't be able to see any tape sticking out getting caught in the threads there you usually have to push down on the nut while you're turning it just to get the threads to engage That's it. You can feel the packing squeezing on the shaft no matter what position it's in. I'm going to wrap the thread sealer tape with the excess towards the valve so none of it's blocking the hole. I'll remove the excess after it's in final position. There's some dirt in there that was on top of the plug I'm going to get something to clean it out with. I'm going to leave it pointing towards the front because that's the way the old one was. But I won't remove the excess thread tape until after I make sure that's where I like it. Here's the fuel cap that was on it, a plastic cap with a vent hole drilled in it. The tank's ready to go on, but the tractor's not ready yet. This throttle cable is connected directly to the carburetor. The throttle cable can overpower the governor, so the governor is effectively bypassed. When it's like that, you can rev the engine too high and blow it up. So I'm going to change that. I'll hook everything up properly and see if it works. And there's some more issues here. The throttle is stuck. And the choke is stuck. That all has to come apart to clean it. Hopefully I can get that stuff unstuck. I plan on forging ahead until I make this thing run and drive. So that's all I have this time. Alright, that's it.